a Cold War classic in 148 scale. Find out more right here on Gary Stuff. Hello there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. So today is indeed a box opening day of this, the MiG-21 MF in Czech service in 148th scale by Edouard. As usual, I'll have a quick look at the history of the MiG-21. I'll have a look at what other kits are available in 148th scale of the MiG. And of course, I'll be showing you what you get inside the box for your money. Now all these bits come as chapters, you can hop back and forth as your heart desires. If you enjoy the show, and I really hope you do, please do remember, imperial thumbs up on the like button below there, every like helps. And of course, if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel, hit the bell and you'll be notified of new videos as they turn up, including the build videos of this aircraft. And as usual, if you'd like to support the channel in any more concrete way, you can perhaps do that through Super Thanks by becoming a channel member or by using any of my online partner programs. So enough of all of that, let's crack on and have a look at the history of the MiG-21. The MiG-21 is the most produced supersonic fighter of all time. Dated by modern standards, in skilled hands it was a formidable dogfighter in its day and dominated many more technologically advanced types in combat. The aircraft was developed at the Mikoyan and Goryevich Design Bureau in the early 1950s as a successor to its own MiG-19 Farmer. After two swept-wing prototypes, the E-1 and the E-2, the E-4 established the final design of a delta wing plus a conventional tail. Once seen by Western observers at the Soviet Aviation Day display in 1956, the type was given the NATO reporting name of Fishbed. The first production aircraft, known as MiG-21F, was introduced to Soviet service in 1959. It was used as an interceptor, capable of reaching Mach 2, but its small fuel tanks gave it a very limited endurance. The basic design was developed constantly. New engines gave the aircraft better performance and endurance. New electronics gave it better weapons integration and defensive systems. Significant improvements include the MiG-21PF all-weather interceptor of 1961, the MiG-21M of 1968, the MiG-21SMT of 1971, and the MiG-21 Beast of 1972. A two-seat trainer version was also made, known as the MiG-21U or Mongol. These are much sought after in the civilian market today. Another aircraft, known as Analog, was used to test the wing design for the Tu-144 supersonic airliner, while the E-7PD experimental short takeoff aircraft had an extra lift engine in the body. The type was widely exported, notably to Warsaw Pact countries and Soviet-aligned nations in Africa and Asia. It was built under license by China as the Chengdu 7, as well as in Czechoslovakia and in India. In total, it's an estimated that 11,500 MiG-21s are built, plus an additional 2,500 or so Chengdu J7s. When flown properly, the MiG-21 acquitted itself well in combat. It easily dominated Pakistan's F-104 starfighters during the 1971 Indo-Pakistan War. In Vietnam, the type scored great successes against aircraft such as the F-105 Thunder Chief and F-4 Phantom using hit-and-run tactics. Changes to American tactics, including the establishment of the US Navy's Top Gun School, evened the scores somewhat. But up to the end of the war, the MiG-21 was still a formidable enemy. In the Arab-Israeli conflicts of the 1960s and 70s, 
the MiG-21 was again to feature heavily, being the fighter of choice among Arab air forces. In air-to-air -air combat, the MiG again fared well against Western types such as the F-4 Phantom and the Mirage III. Losses on either side are difficult to gauge accurately, but it is clear that in the 1967 Six-Day War, both Egypt and Syria lost the majority of their MiG-21 fleets, largely on the ground. More recently, upgrades have been made by customer countries themselves, such as the MiG-21 Lancer, made in Romania, with assistance from Israel's Elbit Systems. Although now superseded by aircraft such as the MiG-29 Fulcrum, the MiG-21 remains in service with 15 or so air forces around the world, as well as with private contractors and individuals as warbirds. Revel were the first to make a 148 scale kit of the MiG-21. This appeared in 1977 and was subsequently also sold by Takara and by Kikole. Revel themselves re-released this kit in 2011. Czech company OEZ made a new tooling in 1988, sold in the same year by Eski, then by KP in 1995, Aeromaster in 1996 and by Aeroteam. It was also the basis for the HIPM kit of the MiG-21UM trainer in the 1990s. AA models made a kit of the Chengdu F7 in 1996, available in other boxes with different markings. Academy made their new tooling of the MiG-21 in 1998, following it up with a new parts box in the same year and later in 2010. The Academy kit was also rebranded by Italeri in 2012 and updated by Wolfpack in 2018. This kit of the MiG-21 MF that I'm making was released in 2011 by Edouard, the same year in which the new tooling was made. As is the way of Edouard, this tooling has spawned around 30 other boxings with different parts and decal schemes. The kit was also marketed by AK Interactive in 2016 and by Revel in 2018. The most recent new tool in 148 was made by Trumpeter in 2012. This had some interesting derivative kits, including the UM Trainer in 2014 and the Chengdu J7GB with an improved crank delta wings in 2015. So the kit comes with a pretty sturdy box, um, check service. The box up, very nice. On the side here are the 11, yeah, 11 possible schemes that we can choose from. They're either from the Czech Republic, Slovakia, or from Czechoslovakia, which of course they were before they became independent countries. Uh, just a summary of the kit here. 11 impressive marking options. Cosgraph decals, rocket pods, a poster, and a pin of the Edward Knight. So that's all inside. Let's have actually open up and have a look at the box. So instructions, of course, we're going to go through that in more detail in a minute. Then we have plastic sprues. Plastic is um, quite a dark grey. There's quite a lot of colouring in the polystyrene. There's four bags of grey sprues and one bag with a uh, transparent sprue in. But we'll have a look at these in more detail. Becoming a bit of a catchphrase here. Um, a lot of decals. I mean, lots of decals, markings, stencils, goodness, but there is just so many bits and pieces on here. You're really going to have your work cut out to isolate which bits you actually want for each individual scheme. But anyway, that's what we're here to do. There is ooh, the aforementioned poster of um, MiG 21 MFs by Pavel Rampier. Uh, I don't know, I might actually put that in a little frame, put it on the wall. Very nice. Because I like a MiG 21. 
I do actually really like a MiG-21. It's a classic aircraft and, and classically Soviet, if you know what I mean. You know, with the classically 50s and 60s with the air intake in the nose, but just classically Soviet with the bare metal and everything. Anyway, um, a lot of options on the photo etch, which is kind of surprising. There's three different versions of the control panel, for example, instrument panel rather, and three versions of the side panels. So there's quite a lot going on in here. Obviously seat belts, um, ejection seat, initiator handles, and so on and so forth as well. Plenty to put in. Then there's a, appears to be an extra don't know if it's a correction sheet or just an extra sheet for this particular set of markings. I'll have a look in a minute, find out what that's all about. There's a canopy mask, that's going to be useful. There's a bit of advertising for a 2011 re release of the DH2 in 148. Very nice. There's the little pin badge with Eduard Knight on it. And there's some resin rocket packs here. I'll have a look at all these bits in much greater detail. If frame A has the fuselage halves and bits of the back of the cockpit, I think air brakes, um, some pylons and stuff like that. Frame B has the wings and the tailplanes, the uh, fin from underneath the back end of the fuselage. So, well. I think some undercarriage doors. Oh no, big pardon, these are flaps. Flap snailer ones, aren't they? Fit, fit in here and here. Frame C are some um, cockpit parts, some um, engine parts and exhaust tubes here, the uh, uh, fan here. I, can't, I don't know if it's a fan blade or a turbine blade because I don't know which end of the plane that goes in at the moment. I think that's the uh, intake lip there, which is a separate piece. It's sort of like the instrument panel. Frame D, um, undercarriage parts, lots of other bits and pieces. The pito here, a huge pito that's got on this. Um, a few gear doors, some bits and pieces of engine, um, the exhaust cone here, the ejection seat is here, um, wheels, the Inlet cone as well. Frame E and these are under wing and underbody stores. There's two frames identical of E. So we have a twos, a ones, a eights, a uh, hundred pound and two hundred and fifty. Sorry, hundred kilo and two hundred and fifty kilo bombs, um, fuel tanks. Are, Beautiful pointed ultra streamlined fuel tanks that the MiG had. Um, so there's two frames of this absolutely identical. Frame F has a load of bits and pieces for the ordnance, so um, fins for the various missiles, bombs, and whatever, uh, clasps, release clasps for the weapons. And there's a couple of bits here, these are um, for the take the rate of rocket assisted takeoff kits there's a couple of those for this aircraft as well because they occasionally you well, actually a lot of the time frequently used rocket assistance to get off the ground and into the air quickly then so they could clean up the fuselage and reduce drag and get on their way to intercept faster so those are in fact i'm going to put those onto the my kit i'm going to have the rate hog gear on Frame H is the uh, backbone, sort of the spine part and, and the fin of the aircraft. The, these would be different for different marks of the MiG-21, different amounts of fuel tankage, extra fuel tankage and things like that. Um, I think, I don't know what these, but well, I'll find what these parts are soon enough because I'll be putting them on. I think they're probably for the back of the cockpit area or the front of the cockpit combing or something like that by the looks of things but anyway the main point of this frame is this is the fin and spine of the fuselage and of course that means by doing it in one frame here we can actually make lots of different versions of the basic 
MiG-21 fuselage by changing the frames. Frame G is the transparent frame and there appear to be three different hood variants, two windshield variants, four, four different um, instrument panels. However, I think it's actually two and there's this one's got all the raised detail that you can spray and paint yourself. This one is the basic detail, which is expecting them to have the photo etch, pre-printed photo etch. In fact, there's three of those and there's two you can paint yourself. Um, gun sight, glass and various other little windows and lights and things like that. If we take a look at some of this plastic in close up, we can see the extremely fine um, modelling here, the lines, rivet points and all that, very, very carefully modelled. These are, well, going to be interesting to pick out when the whole thing's aluminium, of course, but um, the quality of the moulding is, is really very, very good indeed. Um, the bits are sharp, they're clean, there's nothing untoward anywhere in there. The um, interior of the fuselage is, is blank, but then of course it's going to be filled with lots of photo etch to make it look nice and sharp and clean and fresh and lovely. Uh, inside of the air brakes, or the forward air brakes anyway. Again, look, oh, that, you can catch that rivet detail on the inside of the air brakes. Absolutely beautiful. Um, this is the rear air brake, I believe, which doesn't open if you've got the fuel pod in the way, which is handy. Uh, maybe there's like an auto shut off there for that. Um, the weapons pylons, again, beautifully modelled. Uh, they've obviously spent a lot of time researching these and making them look fantastic. I know there's a lot of stencils for them, but they do look the part. Um, and with some panel washing and weathering and stuff like that on there, they're going to look beautiful. Um, generally speaking, the plastic is is good. It's um, it's not too shiny. It's clean, but it's very smooth, but not shiny, which is very good. It means they haven't used release agents probably on the plastic, which is fine. There's no there's no flow lines on there that you can see at all, which is remarkable for some of these larger pieces. Let's have a look at um, the wings. While we're here, yeah, there's the upper surface of the wing again. You can see, look at all that rivet detail that's provided there. There's a couple of like flow flow marks here, but they're nothing, they're not actually punching through to the surface, they're, they're just almost coloration. Look at those, be absolutely beautiful. Now, if I can capture those when I make this model I'll be a very very happy boy. There's a part here where it says um, you can either scribe in the panel. There's a, a panel, this sort of shape panel but quite a long one. There's a, a template for it. You can either scribe it in yourself or you can use a decal. I'm tempted to use a decal because I don't want to ruin that and um, the scribing doesn't give you of course the rivet lines and I'm not going to put rivet lines on this. This is too nice a a kit for me to mess it up with rivet lines that I make myself. Um, yeah, inside. Even look, even the inside of the top of the engine bay. Look at all that detail. Apart that, you know, pro I, me personally, I'm pretty much never going to see. I'm never going to see that. If you put this on a mirror, then yes, you'll see it. Or if you put it into competition, they have a nose around. But um, otherwise, I'm never going to see it. And if we look at one of the sprues, or sprues, frames, I should say, one of the frames of smaller parts, here they are. This is the pito, so it's quite a lengthy pito, and that may just be a bit distorted, but nothing we can't sort out. Um, ejection seats parts I think here, yeah, bits and pieces of yeah, side side panels to the ejection seats. Um, you can see the smaller parts 
are all individually there on the frames with their own feeds, with their own numbers. Um, and I can't see any flash anywhere myself. I can barely see seam lines on these things, let alone flash. Um, some interesting ideas of moulding here. You know, this is part of the engine. I think probably something to do with the afterburner assembly and look at all these different injection points for it because it's a complex part, which is a nice bit of design. There's the uh, single piece of the air intake. That's a nice thing. A, a lot of kits, you, this would probably come as two halves and you'd have to make it. There'd be a massive, great big seam line down there. You'd have to fill and to you'd sort of lose that sharp point. But now these guys have managed to mould that in one go. That's fantastic. Very happy about that. There's a bag here containing two rocket pods that are obviously resin moulded. The detail in here is exquisite with the, the little heads of the rockets there poking out. Um, very beautiful. Very pretty. If you're doing a ground attack. MiG-21. Which of course I'm not, which is a pity in many respects. But there we go. On to some photo etch and there's this glorious piece here. What a lovely sheet that is with that beautiful emerald green interior colour that uh, Russians used. So lots and lots and lots of variants as we've mentioned before. Um, there's at least two variations here and there's a third one up here for instruments, side panel instruments, the side panels themselves, little fuses and goodness knows what else. All sorts of bits and pieces here and there. Um, that's the ejection seat initiator, presumably with some warning panels about the, the use of the ejection seat maybe. Um, seat belts of course are here. Plenty, plenty to keep me busy. Look, there's tiny little toggles here. Goodness only knows what these flick switches are here, but they look like tiny little switches. They're probably like about sort of that big and you go eh, 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 on them. Anyway, um, yeah, plenty there to keep my little hands busy. There's then another sheet. Um, I don't know what these are, whether they're... A, don't look big enough for wing fences, but they might be wing fences, I guess. Um, these bits, I'm going to guess there's something to do with the, maybe the um, injector bars for the afterburner. Again, I'm guessing because I haven't looked, found out in the instructions. The instructions, I have no idea what these are. I'm going to guess they're for rocket packs. Maybe, maybe not. Um, this template here is an interesting thing. That's to ascribe a panel detail on the wing. Why the wing doesn't have that panel detail already scribed, I don't know. Maybe it's a thing for this particular version. I'm, I'm not sure. Anyway, another sheet of photo etch anyway. Now there's, um, there's a few decals for this kit, as you can see. Um, that's a ridiculous amount of decals for this kit. Let's be honest, this is a silly amount. Okay, so you've got Czech and Slovak markings. Um, you have Czech low vis markings. In fact, for one of the schemes, there's a, a, a two tone grey scheme that uses these um, low vis ones. There's celebratory marks and patterns and all sorts. And lots of stencils. Um, obviously not all the stencils are used on this, uh, some aircraft use red and some aircraft use black and some have got, you know, maybe a some are blue and so on and so forth, so there's quite a lot of bits and pieces there. Then there's all the sort of functional decals, a lot of this is to do with weaponry, so they'll be either on the missiles or on the pylons, I know a lot of this stuff here is for, for the pylons. There is a lot of information there. They really did not trust their crew, ground crews to do anything for themselves, did they? I'm pretty sure one of these is Russian for do not think. Anyway, um, I digress. There's a lot of stencils for the various weapon options, so I'm guessing not all of these are going to be used. I'm hoping not all of those are going to be used. 
There's this rather lovely sheet for one of the celebratory um, schemes where it's like a sort of strange animal print type setup. I don't know. Um, we've got a, a map of that anyway somewhere. And again, this is for one of the other celebratory schemes, these red and white decals here. But that's a lot of decals. They are printed by Edward, I think, in the Czech Republic. No, they're printed by Cartograph, a lot of these. This says made in the Czech Republic, this one. This one says printed by Cartograph, as does this one. So I'm sure they're going to be pretty sharp. Okay, so I'm trying to try to pick on some of the really teeny tiny um, markings here. Here's my uh, tweezers for comparison. You can see these are absolutely crystal clean. These are so nice in red as well. That's a difficult colour to print accurately. Black is a lot easier because of the contrast gives you that apparent sharpness no matter what you do. But with red, that is pretty epic. Uh, pretty much blue as well. I'm guessing these these are spot colours. They're not um, CMYK colours. You'd never get that sort of sharpness in CMYK. But yeah, look at the detailing in there. Absolutely exquisite. Uh, I wonder if there's anything else that's worth looking. I don't know if there's anything on these. Oh, that's the that's the outline of the, the thing that we were gonna scribe out, apparently. Or some white on white on red just get a tiny bit lost. But you know. <laughs> look at the size of it it's not really that surprising is it really very very impressive um, again on the mobile jet oil too so to say uh, on the uh, that's absolutely spot on those ejection seat badges are spot on uh, all these markings absolutely exquisite so that absolutely no problem with the uh, sharpness or the registration actually if I have a look at the um, look at that some of these badges here beautifully spot on registration absolutely perfect no worries with this stuff at all absolutely beautiful again this is not big that's like maybe five millimeters across. Absolutely spot on. Alea Iacta Est. Isn't that um, the die's cast or something like that? Anyway, there we go. So beautiful, beautiful decals as usual. There's also this curious little lapel pin. Now it's got the fitting on the back there. Um, of the Edward Knight which apparently appeared on one of these aircraft, uh, one of the markings here, I don't know who, at uh, whose behest it appeared on it, but it apparently did for some time. So there we go, you get your own little Edouard Knight for your lapel, if you're so inclined. Perhaps slightly more germane to the construction of the kit is a sheet of masks. Uh, it appears that you only get Exterior masks, there's no interior masks. And um, I guess these are for one of the dielectric panels that's on the tail to mask. I don't know why we'd need that masking off, but there we go. Um, anyway, most of it's canopy masking, a uh, few for lights and whatever. And that um, vast array of parts and decals means that you need a fast instruction booklet. And this is pretty comprehensive. Um, there's a map of all the parts, what you expect you should have. There's colour callouts down here for everything. Interestingly, this is actually just like a two or maybe, th I don't know if there's any three colour in here. Oh, there's a bit of extra colour now and again. Um, it's largely two colour unshaded the blue tends to be where you are expected to glue things or where things are going to go 
uh, straight away you can see all oh, this is quite complex and everything's going to look lovely everything's going to look amazing but there is so much to do uh, red stuff is where you cut things out or, or remove them completely uh, sometimes if you're going to use um, if you're going to use photo etch instead of the plastic part they'll, they'll point out this is um, if you want to do the air brakes open you have to take part of the kit away um, yeah it's generally all looks very good lots of detail around the actual uh, hook canopy interestingly this um, before before these marks in the earlier marks the hood was hinged at the front it's a single piece of that sort of hinged upwards and actually formed part of the ejection mechanism the hood came up and the ejection seat almost like went with it and, and it acted like a blast shield whilst the ejection seat was coming out um, as found later didn't really need to do that hey ho um, weapons weapons mixing option I mean there's not too many pages there's only like 12 pages of actual instructions so it's not like there's so much um, then we start with stencil variants, which is a whole chapter on itself. Um, weapons options here. And then we start with the schemes. Uh, as I say, there are 11 of them. And I'm still trying to figure out which one I'm going to make. It's quite a... Quite a tricky thing, really. I, I, I kind of like this one with the stripes but then I don't know then I kind of like this one mainly because it's got the grey panels on the upper surfaces and it uses the AA-8 missiles but then you know AA-2s and AA-1s are quite funky in their own way this is a nice scheme this is a nice basic scheme um, with the AA-2 AA-8 um, a, a little bit of uh, a little bit of hound dog or shark features on the front here. I don't call it hound dog. It looks like the hound dog missile at the front end. Uh, yeah, just a little bit of uh, art on the fuel tank here. Although it's got that daft Edward Knight on it. I'm not very keen on the Edward Knight myself. Sorry, Mr. Edward, but I'm just not. Um, this this is better. This is more my, my thing. I like just basic aircraft, basic... On something like a MiG-21, I like a basic, bare metal, Soviet-era look. And, you know, I can mess around with some of these panels, give them different types of aluminium or something, just to break them up. Not a big fan of MiG-21s in camouflage, but there are several camouflage schemes here. There's these celebrate, big celebratory, jazzy, show off schemes as well. Um, Oh, that's interesting. What's that for? Yeah, Czechoslovakia again. Yeah. All very interesting, but it's just not, not my view of a MiG-21. This is sort of kind of cute. The um, the grey grey on grey and low visibility ones from 2003. That's kind of a nice scheme, but it's not bare metal, so it's not really me. Um, Stencil variants, look, all these pylons have all got their own different types of stencils for various things. The missiles have got lots of stencils on them and rocket pods have and all the weapons do, the bombs, you know, they've all got stencils to go on. And then there's ones on the actual fuselage, lots of them. I mean, this is not quite as bad as, say, a Phantom, but, you know, it's not far off. Um... But there we go. So, that's the instructions. That's pretty much what we get. A uh, pretty comprehensive looking kit. There we go. Lovely kit. Seriously, lovely kit. Um, really looking forward to making this. I love a MiG-21. I like the look of all of this. There's a lot of detail. Definitely open cockpit. Let's see how we get on. It's slightly intimidating, but you know what? Every now and again, you've got to push yourself. Every now and again, you do something more straightforward to build up that mojo again, as it were. And every now and again, you push yourself. And this is definitely a push yourself one. Anyway, if you've enjoyed today's show, and I hope you have, please remember Imperial Thumbs Up 
on the like button below because every like counts. And of course, if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell and you'll be notified of all my future videos, including the build of this kit. In the meantime, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see you again very soon. Take care and goodbye. <music>